So, sample 33, page 92. Consider a distribution system with a single product. The product is supplied from two different plants, P1 and P2. P1 can produce unlimited number of units, but P2 has a constraint. It has an annual capacity of only 60,000 units. It costs the same money to produce in both plants, and there are two warehouses, and they also have identical warehouse handling costs. Now, plant P1 and P2 should supply the two warehouses V1 and V2. Then from V1 and V2, we should supply three market areas, C1, C2, and C3, with demands of 50, 100, and 50,000, respectively. So, what we're going to do is, we should find a distribution strategy that specifies the flow of products from the suppliers through the warehouses, then from the warehouses to the market areas without violating the plant P2 capacity constraint. It could only produce 60,000. So, we enter the costs. These are the costs for the different links. So, to move a product that we manufacture in plant 1 to warehouse 1, it costs zero. So they are beside each other. Then moving something from plant 1 to warehouse 2 costs 5. Plant 2 to warehouse 1, 4. Plant 2 to warehouse 2 costs 2. So these are the costs for moving from plant to warehouse. Now we should look into warehouse to customer area 1, for example from warehouse 1 to customer area 1, the cost is 3. If we want to move something from warehouse 2 to, for example, customer area 2, then it is 1. So we want to get the lowest cost possible. Now, how do we do that? Well, we should specify here how many units should go from plant 1 to warehouse 1? How many should go from plant 1 to warehouse 2? We have these costs here. And now, based on that, we should calculate the optimal allocation. How many should be supplied from each plant? How many customers, how, how much should C1 get from warehouse 1? And how much should they get from warehouse 2. So we should do some, some sums here. We should do some sums here. So first of all we should see how much is coming from plant 1. That should be these two. Oops, sorry. So we're doing a summation here. We're summing up these two. Yes. And this one should be, they should all be the same here. So, now we can only move as much from a warehouse to, to the customers that we have moved from the plant to the same warehouse. So, for example, if we are moving 100,000 units into warehouse 1, we can move 100,000 units out of warehouse 1. So, we should have some to warehouse and some from warehouses. So, some to warehouse, that is what we're sending from plant one and plant two into warehouse one. So that's these two. So, and we should have the same formula for what we're sending into warehouse two. Then, these here, that is what we are sending from warehouse 1 to customer area 1, customer area 2, customer area 3. So, we should sum it up here. Sum these three. Alright. These correspond to what we are shipping out from warehouse 1 to these three customer areas. And we should do the same summing up from warehouse 2. Now, so what should we do as a next step? Now, 
we should define some constraints. So these constraints are, first of all, that what we are shipping out of plant two, of, of plant two. So what's we, what we're shipping out of plant two to warehouse one and warehouse two, that should be less or equal to sixty thousand because, as we remember, sixty thousand is the maximum annual capacity of plant two. We have some more constraints. We can only ship as much out from a warehouse as we ship into it. So that gives us that sum to warehouse 1 should be equal to sum from warehouse 1 here. Correspondingly, we want the same for warehouse 2. And then, so th these are the same type of constraint. Then we have one more constraint, and that is the customer demand. So we should supply 50, 100, and 50,000 to these three. So we enter what we're supplying, sum of everything we're supplying to customer one, because that's this field. So we put this constraint here is the same as this one. That should be equal to 50,000. That we are writing in. So then we have customer 2. Everything customer 2 gets should be equal to 100,000. That's the demanding customer area 2. Then we have customer area 3 here, and that should be equal to 50,000. So, and the objective function did the cost here. We're doing it as a sum product. So the sum product is these variables here multiplied by these different costs that we have for the different links. That's, that's what we're going to get. So our objective function is to summarize this. And now we should have a problem solver to minimize this. So we should use a solver to add the values into, into these fields. So we go to data, problem solver. And so note that if you... If you can't see the problem solver in, in under the data tab, you should go to file and options and add it from the, from the Excel add-ons. So our objective here, the objective is, is, the, is the objective function here. That is our, our objective. And the values that we should change, the values that we are, are working with are these values here. And then we have the constraints that we can add one by one. I've already prepared that. It's very easy. You, you add them here. So simply put, it corresponds to this segment here. This box should be clicked because we are not using any negative values. So this is important, otherwise we might get uh, some uh, strange, non-feasible solutions. And the solving method is simplex because this is a linear program, a linear problem, so we can use the simplex solving. It's a minimization problem because we want the lowest cost, the lowest total cost for this problem. So we use solve and yes, it says that it has found a solution uh, according to all limitations and demands. And here we have the perfect allocation for these two plants, two warehouses and three customers. And it's 740,000 in uh, minimization cost.